I'm sure you've heard a lot about the corporate state we now live in and how bad it is and how this has all come about in the last 30 years. And I don't want to get into that subject deeply because it's so deep a subject. I just want to talk about a small misconception, which is the idea that this is all something that's happened in the last 30 or 40 years. From the foundation of the United States, and you could say from the foundation of all the modern nation states going back to Europe, um, and even, even back into mercantile times, this uh, partnership between governments and corporations has been a very prominent factor. It just hasn't been so obvious and evident. It was kept uh, sort of on the down low, so to speak. What's really changed in the last 30 years is the truly global nature of corporate commerce and the fact that unlike in the past, the governing boards and CEOs and high executives of these multi-transnational corporations no longer have to stay close to the center of their operations or live in any particular community. They can, if they wish, be on the go their whole lives, and many of them are. They do not have a sense of owing to where they live, nor do they need to invest in any particular place where they live in order to have the kind of living conditions that they would want where they in permanent residence. This is uh, a key factor in making the United States and Western Europe a great place to live was these, was these cabals that were formed among the local uh, wealthy and uh, the business class. And uh, before, before that it was the landowners, but again I'm getting, getting in too deep here. So I don't want to get too deep, I don't want this to be a long video. But if you, if you want a good overview of, of how this comes about, uh, I just finished reading uh, this book, Hawaii, by James Michener. Um, I don't know if it's still in print. I guess you might have to go to the library. But anyway, no, it, it's completely fictional, but I haven't seen a better inside account and description of the formation of these uh, dynastic cabals in a, in a community that uh, combine the, the business interests with the governance of an area and indeed uh, affect the governance of the entire country. Um, to get into the heart of that, of course, you have to get, get deep into the book because he starts like 2,000 years ago, as James Michener always does. But uh, by the end of the book, you have a pretty good picture of how these, these things work, not just in Hawaii, but virtually in every community in, in the United States and the West. Now, if you think this is a recent development, uh, bear in mind that Elizabeth I chartered uh, the East India Company. So uh, this is not really a new phenomenon, it's just things within the phenomena have changed and uh, it's come to our attention.